Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a, a railing for my staircase that I just finished on a previous video. Uh, I already took it down and I have it up here on horses in my house because it's only about 20 degrees outside. Uh, I'll show you where it was, how to step to look with the uh, little rug pieces that I put down on it. I stapled them on and we'll take care of this railing and we'll paint the uh, railing brackets bronze as well. All right, here it is. All right, so being that this is round and I want to keep it that way and I don't want to make any flat spots besides the bottom, which is flat, I'm going to sand this by hand just to get that layer of polyurethane off and then we'll stain it dark. I got this old belt been used up, but it should work okay on here. All right, guys, so I did a sanding, it's pretty good, with a 60 grit, and now I'm gonna hit it with something finer. I have 100, 120, so I'll go 100 first, and then I'll go back to the 120. You gotta rub your hands on here. It is pretty smooth, but I wanna make sure it's really smooth. Okay, that's the 100, and I'll go to 120. Pretty good. This is all sanded down. This is smooth, feels nice. All right guys, it's all sanded down. Now I'll stain it with the briar smoke and uh, I'll have to let that dry obviously. And then polyurethane. So, we get a rag, get some gloves on and stain this thing quick. Okay, for those of you who haven't seen it before, I like using this color here called briar smoke. Uh, it's a varathane wood stain. Uh, it says it dries in an hour, so we wait for an hour and then we can uh, polyurethane. So there you go, it's made by Rustoleum. And I think I usually pick this up in the Home Depot. Got an old rag, an old t-shirt actually that I cut up to use as a rag. And open up this stain here. Get my gloves before I get this all over me. Always good to have a box of gloves around. I get them at the uh, local Harbor Freight. Maybe five, six bucks for a whole box of them. These are a little thin. These are five mil. You may want to go a little thicker. I might go a little thicker next time myself because you can't get these off without really ripping them. But or sometimes the tips will break off. You don't realize it and you take the glove off and, you, and your finger's all brown or whatever color stain you're using. So. Stain rag. And we'll see what it look like. I gotta be really careful because I'm doing this in the house. I don't know how this is gonna hold up to stain because it's a red wood, it's a very hard wood. So it may need a few quotes, which looks like it might. Because it's not, looks like it's not really penetrating. I wonder, I'm gonna try something guys. I'm gonna try to wet a rag, another rag, and wipe it down and see if I can open the pores of the wood. Because uh, I'm not a big stain guy, but I've heard that if you rub down wood with, uh, with a little bit of water, lightly it'll open the grain and it'll suck in the uh, stain i'm pretty sure that's what it is they also have like a some kind of coating that you put on wood before you stain it so to get a more of an even coat but i'm not sure if that opens the grains but anyway i don't have that i'm gonna try with some water and i dampened up my rag i wipe it down a little it almost looks like the stain that's gonna do anything, but we'll see. This too. Uh, wood, this wood is very, very hard. It's really not doing much to stain. I'll try to lace it on a little thicker. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over, hit the flat spot, 
and then flip it. So I'm gonna keep going all around, flip it, and now I can just do the top. All right, guys, that's the first coat. Didn't really do much. It's a little darker, almost like it was originally. Um, this wood is very, very hard and dense, so I guess it's hard to stain it. Um, we'll see what happens on the next coat. So we wait an hour. All right. Be back in an hour. All right, guys, while we're waiting, I'm going to take these brackets, like I had mentioned. I'm going to try to screw them down to a block of wood. Um, they've been in the house, so they're warm. And the paint's in the house, the uh, bronze. And what I'll do is I'll go outside quick in the sun, because it is sunny out, but it is only like 21 degrees. I'll spray them really quick and bring them back in the house. All right, so I'll be back, and you'll see what they'll look like. Uh, well, you'll see the difference of what they'll look like. I'll screw them down to the wood, show you what that looks like first. Actually screwed to the wood, because it's a good idea to do that if you want to paint something like this, because it's hard to hold. You don't want to keep flipping them back and forth on a piece of cardboard or something. If you screw them down on the wood, hopefully you can get it all done in one shot. Okay. All right, so the plan is to screw these down with one screw to hold them down, and then I'll... <clears throat> oh my, I lost my voice. I'm going to screw them down to the wood with one screw, that way I can spray all around them. And I think these little brackets, I can probably just, well, maybe I'll screw them down too so I don't gotta worry so much. And I'll spray them. I'm gonna put, put them in between, that way these larger ones are far apart and I can get around them better. Maybe something like this. It's gonna look like, <laughs> it's gonna look like a coat rack. I just screws along. Make sure I don't go into the floor. That wouldn't be good. I'm gonna leave it a little bit loose so it don't get stuck on there. Just like that. That should be fine. Put one here. Okay, and the leftover screws, you just put it in the wood, leave them a little high. You're just gonna paint the heads. Just like that. That's all to do with one hand. Alright guys, so that's what it looks like. Just a temporary place to uh, spray these things and I can carry it back in the house. So, we'll run outside and spray them up quick. Alright guys, so we're outside. Shaking up some paint. And then we'll uh, try to spray these bad boys. It is nice and sunny out, I'll tell you that, but it's cold. See if that's enough. Okay. Let's try to get a coat on this. This paint is spitting a little bit. I don't know if it's cold or it's just an old can. No, Amory, my wife said it might. It's okay. Got to get a coat. All right. I think that looks pretty good, guys. They look bronze to me. All right. I'm going to bring them back in the house. Let them dry. We got a good coating on there, and we got a coating on top of the screw heads. 
I think it's gonna look pretty good. All right, guys. I have a few like what I call handyman jobs. So the railing, the little brackets, painting them, and I have to do a um, transition from rug to the new stairs because I had to cut the rug. So I want to put it in the doorway, like a metal strip. So I bought a bronze one. It has to be drilled um, into the hardwood. It already has holes in that. And then I'll put that in as well. So I might as well video that. And I'll show you where I'm talking about on the top of the stairs. So right here is where I cut it. On that top step. So we'll put that across here. I got to cut it to 32 inches. So I'll go back down and uh, outside and I'll cut the metal strip. And we'll install it. Okay, this is it here. A little carpet trim with fasteners. I think it was like seven bucks, seven, eight bucks. And it's, uh, like I said, like an antique bronze color. So that's going to go there. I think it comes uh, 36 inches, so I got to cut it down to 32. Yeah, maybe 36. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Okay, so for this, it already has some pre-drilled holes on the top. So what I'm going to do is cut a little bit off of both sides so that I can keep these holes. Because they have some like a slight countersink in them. And uh, I'm going to have to do it with a hand hacksaw. I'm not going to use my jigsaw because it'll probably vibrate and may scratch this up. So I'm just going to use my hacksaw and do it the old-fashioned way by hand. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a little bit off of this end and then flip it over. And we'll get it to 32. I gotta get it closer to the vise, so if it seems to be vibrating too much. Okay, that's one piece off. seems to be very, it's very weak. It's very thin aluminum. So, I'm going to bend a little bit there, but easily straightenable. Now I'll flip it, measure, and get it to 32. I don't know if you noticed, but I put a rag in my vise so I don't scratch it. Vise is underneath. And as the old uh, Bob Vila used to say over on, uh, what channel was that? The Home Network. Measure twice cut once which is what I did Bob Vila good old Bob Vila this whole house okay wow it is so soft I feel like I'm ruining it yeah did get a little bend in there you can see it's very, very soft, and I see a little indent. So I'm going to have to try to straighten that out. Wow. Very soft. Let's see if I can do it with vice, or I might need to hit it with a piece of wood. Not bad, guys. I got it pretty straight. It's not the best piece of... Uh, edging I ever bought, I'll tell you that. I'm gonna get the uh, file and file the sharp edges off both sides, and then we'll go in and install it. Much better. Do the other side. This one came out a little crooked. You can see right here. So I'll file some off, see if it fits. Okay. Not bad. Filed off. We'll go see if she fits. All right, guys, we're back in the house, and I'm gonna see if it fits across, and we'll install it. See if I can get a better view. I 
nice and tight. All right, I think that's pretty good. Get it close to there. The rug is very thick. Um, anything under it? Not really. It's got the cushion on the rug over here. I took it out so it would tip in a little. As long as the doors close. Yeah, plenty of room. All right. Plenty. Okay, it came with installation nails. And uh, I have my own drill bit and my gun here. And I'm going to pre-drill. Very, very small drill bit, if you can see it. Very, very hard wood. Hey, there you go. I'm gonna try one in the middle first. Okay, one more to go on this side. I didn't feel like it had any wood. Let's see. Not bad, people. We could take that one off the list. Another job done. Handyman Saturdays. That's the way it goes. Take a look from this side. Pretty good. All right, better than it was. Someday I'll do this rug up here. It's getting old, the old bedroom rug. Maybe put the same floor as I did in the uh, first floor. But that's a whole nother situation. Don't hold me to that. The wife's going to hear this and go, yeah, that's what I want to do. But that's way, way in the future. All right, let's go see how the rest of the uh, jobs are doing. All right, guys, uh, doing my handyman duties today on Saturday, like I said. So I decided, uh, while I'm waiting for that railing to dry, I would just wash the dishes quick. Just, that's the kind of guy I am. So... I did some dishes, and now I'm noticing here, the drain is a little slow. I'm going to try to see if I can use this stuff here to take care of it. I picked it up at Home Depot. I used it in the bathroom, so we'll see if uh, it'll work here as well. So it's... Uh, 128 ounces it says you only got to put about 8 to 12 ounces down the drain but I'm gonna put a little bit more than that and uh, hopefully it'll get down beyond that and break some stuff up so just figured I'd throw that by you guys part of my day my handyman duties down a little bit it's slow and now I'm gonna pour it in it had to be about 20 ounces or so I would think it says mix 8 ounces with 24 ounces of warm water apply down drain till drain improves do daily 
blah, 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 eight to 12 ounces of warm water, flush it. And I did it with that, but I'll, I'll flush it a little bit. We'll do eight to 10 ounces. I'll just do a quick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. I hear some bubbling down there. We'll let that sit a while and we'll see what happens. All right. And now it's time for breakfast. All right, guys. So it was a little bit light, the first coat. I'm going to try a second coat now. It's been a little over an hour. It's taken a long time to dry, maybe because it's cold outside, but it's pretty warm in here, so I'm not sure. But anyway, second coat. A sponge. I feel like it's still shiny. Well, because I, I just because I coated it. Mm -hmm. It's so smooth. This stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a little darker. That's gonna take a lot of coats, I think. Yeah, I think you have to do a lot of work. You just eat it. Huh. Coat it. I don't know if the sponge will. Maybe the. Maybe one of these might be better. Let's see. I use one of these, let it sit on it for a while. Look at the sponge. And if I do this and let it dry, Are you filming? And then wipe God it. Damn it. What? I didn't know you were filming. Why? Oh. oh, yeah, look at that. It makes it solid on it. Maybe do it like this. Oh, what were you using? A rag? Oh. Yeah, just wipe it on. Oh. I mean, this is gonna. This looks gray on here. I think I have a darker stain in the car in the garage too. Let's see what this looks like. I let it dry a little. So bit. It looks now. brown to me, like taupe. Yeah, yeah, let it dry and see. I mean, even if we did it like a bronze color, oh. that's better than that. That orangey, old fashioned. Well, the sponge, the sponge thing sucks up a lot because it's going pretty far. All right, so the sponge made a big difference. This I got these from Home Depot. They're a big step up from the ones in uh, the dollar store, I'll tell you that. You usually buy them at the dollar store, but even though they look the same, they do not act the same. So, Home Depot. There you go. It's got one heavy coat with the sponge. So we'll let that dry a little bit, and then maybe I'll try to wipe a little bit of it off so I can get some of the wood grain to show. And we'll see what that looks like. May need another coat, but it's a lot closer than it was before. All right, guys, it's the next day, actually the next afternoon. Now I will be installing the handrail. I already put the brackets up on the wall. So far, I'm all by myself, so it might be a little hard for me to do it, but let's see how it goes. And we'll get this handrail put back on that's been stained and polyurethaned to match the steps. Try to get to the old marks. There it is. That's it for the rail. She's up and matches the steps. So for those of you who decided to side with my wife, I got it done. So there it is. Molding will be next. We'll see how that goes. Hi everyone, welcome back to What's In Your Garage. Today I'm gonna to show you something that's in my garage. It takes up a lot of room. It's a 1954 Chevy 210 sedan, customized with a five and a half inch chop, uh, Chevy V8 drivetrain, Mustang power rack front end, all new wiring, paint, new interior, the whole nine yards. I decided to show it because I am selling it and it may be gone soon and I'll never get to record it again. So this could be a what's in your garage that's uh, out of the garage soon. So you never know. So here it is. All right, so here it is. This is a 1954 Chevy 210. They call it a sedan because there's a post around the windows. 
Otherwise, it would be considered a Bel Air or a coupe. So when you open the door, as you see, there's a frame around the window. So that had to get chopped as well. Back windows go up and down. It has fender skirts I can put on it. Side pipes. Some nice rims. Brand new tires. It's got a 350 Chevy motor in it. It's came out of a Camaro. 12 volt. It used to be 6 volt. Mustang power steering. Mustang power brakes. That's the front grill. It usually has less teeth. I put an extra tooth. I call them teeth. In between that center bar. I put one extra one in between each one. Just to give it a different look. I even changed the blinkers. To that amber color. They used to be white. Or clear. So I did that. That's a battery tender on here right now. That keeps the battery from dying when the car sits. Let's lower this a little bit so you can get an idea what it looked like with the hood shut. Pretty mean looking. If you have anybody who's interested, let me know before it sells. That's the inside. I don't know if you can see it that good in the garage, but... There it is. It is for sale. Let me know and I'll uh, give the person my information if they're really interested. Here's the back. If you notice the tail lights, there's no reverse. Reverse lights in 1954 was an option. So if you opted for it, you got it. If you didn't, you didn't get it. This is what they call the rain drip rail. So when the rain hits the roof, it rolled down like a gutter and came out back here. And that's still on it. A lot of chop cars, they take it off. Side view mirror with a little temperature thermometer on there. So there you go, a 1954 Chevy 210 sedan, custom, five and a half inch chop, paint, motor, power steering, new cross member in the front, all new steering components, new dual exhaust out the back, the side pipes are really just for show though you can hook them up, um, it's an automatic. 3 speed turbo 350 tranny Nova Posi rear that's it that's the car alright guys so that's it that's the 54 Chevy again thanks for watching and that's it for what's in your garage take care and hit that subscribe button if uh, you like what you see. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.